Well, good morning, and welcome to City Talk. It's a weekly radio program, it's a podcast, it's a TV program. At the City of Waco, where we communicate great things that are happening. Joining me today is Millette Harrison, who is the Director of Neighborhood Engagement, which we'll talk about in a moment. And the uh, follow-up, and to support her, is the Engagement Program Coordinator, uh, Rolanda Rodriguez. Thank you all so much for joining us. Well, you know, the Neighborhood Association thing that happened way back in the early 90s, I think it was, the city council was dedicated to want to engage people in their neighborhoods and help improve the quality of life, and they would be able to give input, uh, was one of the way that started off. And you originally, I think, was one of the jobs that you did. I don't know. You've moved around in the city because you've been here, what, 20 some odd years? A little over 20, 21. Okay. And you've done so many different things. Recently, you just came from the economic development area. Yes. So you've done a lot of great work there and a lot of great economic developments happened. But you've just recently uh, taken on the role as the director of what the city council has taken on as a new, really an increased and renewed priority. Uh, and they've created a neighborhood engagement department. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. Yeah. And uh, Millette is the, the director of that. Uh, tell us a little bit about the history of, of, I've just kind of said a little bit just on the yeah. cusp of it, but talk a little bit about neighborhood and how the importance of it is. Sure. Well, you're, you're spot on. It was in the early 90s that was the first uh, effort by city staff um, to not only engage with neighborhoods, but actually we didn't have a lot of neighborhood associations in the city of Waco then. And so city staff actually helped create neighborhood associations. Um, all over the city um, at that time, so there was a there was a very specific effort to get neighborhood associations up and running, and primarily to for the purpose of communicating with the city. They, you know, they are they live in their neighborhoods. They're the experts in their neighborhood about what's right, what's wrong. A pothole that just spotted, you know, they just that just appeared today for some reason, whatever that might be. And so it was really to just create the relationships and be able to then have the back and forth communication um, from the neighborhood association folks to the city folks and so we can work together. I think one of the original concepts was uh, also the fact that, you know, uh, some neighborhoods will continue to go down in value and, and blight would happen if people didn't have pride in their community and they wanted the city and the council wanted to let everybody know this is important to the city and we don't want to have areas like that. The best way to do it is to have pride in your ownership. And likewise, I know you've worked in the housing community development department for a long time, too. Uh, our housing stock has been upside down as far as ownership versus rental, uh, the percentage-wise. Uh, and that was something I know the council was interested in throughout the years of trying to level that out better. Ownership and pride in ownership is something to that. Yeah, Absolutely. I, I came on board with the city in 1999, and it was around that time in early 2000 when council in addition to, in my first job at the city was working with neighborhood associations. Uh, so that was when my original uh, focus when I came to the city. But that was also the time that council became very focused on home ownership and trying to increase home ownership in our communities. Um, and also in a, to try to do the best job we could of increasing home ownership, helping people to enter home ownership and be ready to do that, but also to help neighborhoods become more uh, mixed income, more diverse, so they have a lot of good resources from a variety of, of folks. Um, and it really does help with the health of the neighborhood when there's a variety of people mm -hmm. in each one. Yeah. Well, I know it was last year, I think in October or whatever else, when kind of when they were adopting the budget and things for the 2020 year that we're in now, uh, 2020 and 21, uh, the council realized we have to put a priority on this. And I th is that, I think, is when they de develop the neighborhood engagement idea rather than neighbor association. Uh, and you were part of either the housing community development, all that. Yeah. So that's been joggled around. Uh, talk a little bit about that, how the council has really put this as a high priority. And then we're going to talk about some of the new funding that they've created, first ever, uh, sure. to help neighborhoods. Yeah, so uh, you're right. City council and city management both have placed a high priority on neighborhood engagement. And this is the first time that the effort, uh, there have always been a variety of staff le staffing levels and focus on uh, having someone who's a contact person for the neighborhoods. But this is absolutely a brand new focus with two dedicated full-time staffers um, to work on the program and to help create new interest and in, in new access to 
working with the city and just becoming, uh, having that relationship solidified uh, with the existing active neighborhood associations and making sure folks that are out there that might not have one that want to start one yeah. can as well, but to be a resource to those folks. And we're going to talk about that too a little later on. Yeah. Uh, if you're not a part of a neighborhood association or if one's not in your area, we're going to talk about how you might be able to start one or get get a group of neighbors together and that kind of thing. Absolutely. And one of the things I remember also, the police had a, a neighborhood watch program. Was that ever connected or at least similar thought process? Uh, because I know, you know, putting the sign up that says so-and-so neighborhood watch, Dean Highland's neighborhood or Sanger Heights or one of the active yeah. ones. Because pr crime is obviously an issue and we want to make sure that that doesn't cause loss of value too. Absolutely. So neighborhood watch program has always been underneath the police department and it is typically we I mean we work with uh, their community outreach folks every chance we get because it you know it just makes us all better but neighborhood watch program is really focused on a few blocks it's really uh, just an intentional effort to get folks to do what they used to do a long time ago know who your neighbors are what cars they drive who should be there who shouldn't and when mm -hmm. And so you can just help keep a lookout for each other and keep each other safe. Yeah. So. Well, one of the, there's three words that I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, on your new engagement deal is reconnecting, mm -hmm. okay, reviving, and providing resources. Yes. Which comes to a point, now I'm going to turn to Rolando. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you've been sitting silent this minute. You've got a lot of knowledge and things. You're the new hire, as it may be, of the additional yeah. full-time employment uh, to support what Millette and that whole engagement is. So talk to us about what kind of resources does the city provide uh, for our neighborhood uh, associations as they are. Yeah, definitely. So really our role is to be a liaison between uh, the neighborhood associations and the city. So uh, one of the biggest resources is really making sure that um, – the neighborhood can connect to the right city department for any of their concerns, um, and we're also there at all of the uh, all of the neighborhood association meetings to really answer those questions and then uh, connect them with the right people. But we also have a bunch of other in-kind uh, resources. Uh, we offer printing services through our um, graphics department. Uh, parks, they can work with parks and recreation to set up events, uh, and then they also have other opportunities like. Um, uh, dumpster roll-offs for um, for cleanings, uh, neighborhood cleanups. Um, so we have a lot of those resources available for for neighborhoods, and a bunch of it is on our on our website, um, just at you know Waco Texas. Well, you mentioned one of those, and not that all of them are important, but you mentioned right. that staff would be attending their mm -hmm. meetings, yeah. whether they meet quarterly or meet monthly or how often. And that shows the interest and engagement of the, the city wanting yeah. to be there. We want to not guide, I think, correct right. me if I'm wrong, exactly. not guide in any way, but be listening, be the ear close by to be able to say, oh, well, we can do this and help mm -hmm. do that reconnecting and, and the resourcing. Right. Yeah, mm -hmm. there's a lot of things. Mm -hmm. Now, you mentioned uh, uh, the uh, neighborhood cleanups and things. That's something that uh, Keep Waco Beautiful has worked with mm -hmm. and yeah. council district cleanups. But this is getting more specific to a neighborhood. It's not necessarily maybe a council district. Because right. a neighborhood area, how would you say that is defined? How, who draws those lines and borders? Uh, if the existing ones already know, and you can go to a map because I think, well, number one, you have a new website mm -hmm. uh, that just went live recently. But talk a little bit about the website and how people can go on that and find out what neighborhood association they're a part of or if they look at the map, there's not one. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, just if you go to waco-texas.com slash neighborhoods, um, right on our landing page, there's a button. You can click it. It says, what's my neighborhood? And it has our map. You can type in your address, and it tells you your neighborhood association. It tells you what city council district you're in, your trash pickup day even. Um, so that's a really good starting point to figure out where you live. And so on our website, we have um, just information about how you can start a neighborhood association if um, there isn't already one there. Uh, we have a handbook there. It has a lot of great resources with tips on how to um, help identify a core group in your neighborhood to get together and figure out um, who um, can really start building this, this neighborhood association, start building this engagement. And uh, we also have a directory there on our website that does, has a list of everyone you can for each neighborhood association, the contacts, the email, phone numbers, you can start reaching out to yep. um, where you live. Yeah. Absolutely. And the city will help support those things, mm -hmm. those communication, things like yeah, that. Definitely. Now, I'm sure that schools within the area, churches or whatever else are also a vital part of 
helping to organize and pull that together, maybe by providing a meeting place or mm -hmm. something like that. I'm sure, you know, because, you know, I, I don't know if you, some people meet at their homes, but, you know, if you have a school district, a uh, school, I'm going to use Dean Highland as an example. Dean Highland is a identified name of a school mm -hmm. uh, located on, on Trice in, in that area. Uh, and I'm sure they let their their building or their cafeteria or whatever be available for meetings and stuff like that because it, it behooves them to take care of their people, mm -hmm. the children and the playgrounds and everything else, and let that be the whole thing. And back to the cleanup thing a little bit, uh, I have noticed in the notes that I, you, you so nicely gave me uh, ahead of time, uh, they're doing up to three neighborhood cleanups. I don't remember ever doing three neighborhood cleanups a year, maybe. I don't know, especially if I maybe get them confused with the, neighbor, with the uh, council district cleanups, too. Well, I will say that the city council district-wide cleanups have really taken the place in some cases for the mm – -hmm. we have always had three cleanups available for neighborhood associations, and they used to do them – just within their boundary, um, but the district-wide cleanups have proved really successful and a good option, and mm -hmm. so we haven't seen as much demand for a neighborhood cleanup as we used to, but we want to keep that opportunity on the table. That could be a compliment them. because you may be cleaning up and then don't have as much mess to clean up. This is what it is. Here's hoping. Yeah. Yeah. And I know the Solid Waste Services has, you know, you can put out bulky items, you can put out brush and things every other week or different times, and, you know, they've they ramped their services yes, up quite a bit, so it absolutely. doesn't have to be an organized cleanup as it is for, for those type of things. But great, right. great things that are happening, and uh, that's why we want to be sure and have this conversation uh, that you all can understand and know the fact that city facilities uh, for meetings and other things are all available to uh, make it easy. Mm -hmm. No excuse not to be a part of a neighborhood association. And back to the advertising, because, you know, sometimes communicating uh, about meetings, about things, and concerns uh, is out there. And so uh, other than, you know, you mentioned about the printing services. I know we've always done printing and things to our graphic department, but, uh, you know, helping with either Facebook or neighborhood mm -hmm. or the helping with uh, how to create a web page or those kind of talk a little bit about some of that promotional and advertising type things. Yeah, definitely. So neighborhood associate, we post neighborhood association meetings on um, the city limits newsletter on the e-newsletter e e that goes out. Um, but we also, um, have an opportunity for neighborhoods to create their own web page on our websites. We have a few that have uh, already done that. Um, and then we're also helping neighborhoods with um, building a social media presence. Here in a few weeks, we're going to have you know a training opportunity for neighborhoods to, uh, to really learn how to build a Facebook page or how to really build engagement if they already have one, some tips and tricks to help them through that process. So we're really wanting to help them with the tools that they need to, um, to advertise for themselves, but also for us to kind of use our resources to promote them as well. Mm -hmm. How many neighborhood associations are active right now? That's a hard question. Maybe I should have. You know, yeah, no, it's, it, yeah. it, it, it's absolutely fine because it's a moving number all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, we have probably 15, 16 who I would consider active or have been active COVID. That you can identify. Yeah, COVID put everybody in a different yeah. space in their world, but that are active and we have uh, one uh, that has sort of just reactivated and has had a, some initial meetings to pass bylaws and get officers elected and they're mm -hmm. Dean Highland about mm -hmm. to get up and running. Oakwood is also working on doing that exact same thing. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's, it's moving mm -hmm. at, mm -hmm. at all times, but we have had very good interest since we, since the city rolled out this neighborhood engagement effort um, and just had a lot of folks who are interested in getting uh Things going again mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. after the COVID pause, um, and we have some that still haven't quite done that yet, but they are talking about it and working towards their first meetings. Hopefully all of this activity that we talked about, your presentation at the city council meeting a week or so ago, mm -hmm. uh, as well as just the publicity, and I know there's some the newspaper article and the TV coverage and stuff like that. Some great information is getting out there, just like this program. We're able to let people know the fact that the city is interested. And with you have 15 neighborhood identified neighborhood associations in various levels of activity, uh, those are things that are, are going to uh, maybe make things uh, really. Well, what, tell us, uh, Rolando, tell us a little bit about why should someone get involved with a neighborhood association to begin with? Because there are so many opportunities mm -hmm. and uh, yeah. that type of thing. Yeah, you're right. There's so many opportunities there with neighborhood associations. It could be a social thing if you wanted to get to know your neighbors, meet new people, build relationships, or just find out what's going on in your neighborhood. Um, but it's also really an opportunity to have one voice, uh, one strong voice um, for everything that's going on in your, your neighborhood to voice those concerns to whether that's city council or other entities here in the, in the area. 
Um, so it's really that strong, um, unified area for people to get together. And it's also an opportunity to build leadership skills. So if someone um, is interested in uh, maybe at some point running for city council or joining a board and commission here with the city, you could start with a neighborhood association, um, join the board or run for a leadership position with the neighborhood association. So it's, um, you know, the social aspect and then also the um, opportunities to, to build leadership. Mm -hmm. That's an excellent point because, you know, building future leadership, we have to look back. I mean, I'm an old guy and I can look, and I've lived in Waco all my life. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, you can look and see where the leadership has come from. How do we groom people to be the next leaders? City Council certainly is one of them, but Boards and Commission is a, is a very important role that is played by citizens. And the more we as uh, the government as it is are engaged more closely with the citizens, they realize, you know, the government is not this big, great, big regulatory deal. Yeah. This is what I pay for, and this is we're getting it. If you just joined us for visiting with Millette Harrison, who is a neighborhood engagement director of that department, uh, and Rolando Rodriguez, who is also he's an engagement program coordinator, and we're talking about the new uh, emphasis that the city council has uh, brought to neighborhoods and engaging them. And so one of the key things we're going to talk about this before we get through uh, in, a, in a little bit about how to start up. You mentioned this on the website, mm -hmm. but if you you drop your pen on the on the map and say, I don't see anything in my area because Waco is a big area now. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about that. One of the things that's just recently been announced is a new grant program. All of a sudden, and I hate to use this kind of a cliche or this statement, but, you know, the city is putting its money where its mouth is. <laughs> we're now... We're now going to say, you know what, not only the printing and some of those other little things we used to do, we're getting ready to put some pretty good-sized bucks. And, and I'm talking about, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, my notes show that uh, there's like $7,500 grant for each project that a neighbor group, neighborhood association group does, mm -hmm. and maybe $10,000 a year for beautification-type things. Talk about this grant program because this is a definite commitment by the city council financially. Uh, to come forward and say, you know what, if you're organized as a neighborhood association and you're wanting to do certain things, there's a grant, and it's a matching grant because they still have to come up with 25% of the cash or maybe volunteer hours. Some of those things are, are going to be worked out with a final approval of the council. That can come up. Actually, this will air after that vote, but uh, we're recording it early. Talking about the grant program. Sure. So city council was uh, very nice and generous to allocate hundred thousand dollars in this fiscal year's budget and they anticipate allocating uh, funds in in upcoming years as well so this is this is should be an ongoing program uh, the basic structure of the grant is an, a Waco neighborhood association so our apologies but not to other nonprofits or other groups out there but specifically Waco neighborhood associations that that we work with mm -hmm. um, have the ability to apply for a grant to do beautification, neighborhood identification, any sort of community project that has some sort of public benefit. The maximum grant for any one project is $7,500, up to. Mm -hmm. So the city will match up to $7,500. The neighborhood association group needs to bring to the table 25% of that $7,500, so about $1,800. Mm -hmm. um, that can be cash. They can get donations from others, sponsorships, and that can also be in-kind labor on a project. Depends on the type of project. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but that is absolutely um, a, a, what we believe a very big win for these neighborhood associations because they are volunteer mm -hmm. folks. I mean, they're volunteer organizations. They're not big formal corporate structures. And so that many of them don't have very much money in the bank. Mm -hmm. if a little bit of dues. And, and they don't need a bunch of money because they don't typically take on projects, but they would love to, given the opportunity. This gives them the opportunity to say, these are the most important things we want to tackle in our neighborhood that would have an effect on neighborhood pride, neighborhood identity, and just the community rallying around a particular type project. Mm -hmm. So there's a variety of what that can be. Mm -hmm. um, and we haven't even gotten in the first applications yet. <laughs> uh, the deadline is May 28th, but it, the, the point is it needs to be in the public and have a public purpose, but it could be any number of things uh, that helps 
the neighborhood association feel like they've had a good impact in their neighborhood. Another reason to organize and be a part of a neighborhood group. <laughs> Collectively, you have the power to use the money the city is giving. That's not an individual cannot get, apply for this grant. It has Correct. to be a neighborhood group. Mm -hmm. Yes, it does. And so uh, they're, they're committing, the council is committing and staff to uh, a lot of resources financially to make the, the area beautiful. This could be some other major or, or minor changes to the parks that are in the area and anything. So, And so, as you're saying, the, the first grant proposal has not even been brought. You may see some creative things that you all hadn't even thought about. You're going to say, Correct. okay, exactly. we're going to see how that can do. But it's going to improve the city. And that's Absolutely. the beautiful part about it. So, Absolutely. you know, and, and working for the school district, for that matter, they might be able to say, well, okay, maybe the school district wants to partner some of that kind of thing. So all kind of great advantages by being a part of it. So and now you mentioned one thing that, that sometimes can scare people about <laughs> neighborhood association, dues. Okay. Dues is an optional thing that a neighborhood does. Mostly, I think, just to kind of create an operational fund that they can yeah. pay for postage or do a few little things like that. But it's not going to... I don't think y'all are encouraging too much dues because we don't want to stymie the idea of people getting involved. Right. Well, neighborhood associations are their own entity. They are independent from the city. We work with them to help make the neighborhoods better, but they, they are their own organization. Most of them have very nominal dues. Mm -hmm. I'm talking less than $20 a year, mm -hmm. some, some cases $10, $12 a year for the household. It's, it's not something that's mandatory. And it is not something that will be a financial burden yeah. um, like some other types of organizations mm -hmm. might be where it's mandatory and, and, and it's really a, a high price. This is a very low point of entry, and you're right. It absolutely is really just to help them cover some basic expenses um, of we help with printing and postage here at the city for them. But just little things they may want to do. Um, you know, put out some flyers. Maybe they just want to have some snacks at a neighborhood meeting yeah, or something. Yeah. It doesn't have to be a huge thing, but it does help them have a little bit of funding to go along. Sure, sure. Now, I know you did a lot of research prior to some of this with peer cities, as we as we identify. We have an, identified several cities throughout the state and the, yeah. the country, for that matter, that are similar in size and complexion and all. That, just the way our our city is mm -hmm. to see how they're doing. It. What did you find out? And because uh, I think uh, we can be kind of proud of what we're already doing sure. and what we're getting ready to do. I just I, right. I want to hear about that because yeah. it's always good to brag on ourselves a little bit. Absolutely. <laughs> Well, I will say there are a few of our peer cities, but certainly not all, that do have some sort of neighborhood engagement program. Some of them are more specific to their housing and community development department and really just for input on plans and mm -hmm. things. Um, but there are a few who do have neighborhood engagement where they're really out working with the neighborhood associations. Um, and only two of those, though, College Station and Denton had a similar grant programs to what we were trying to create. So when we were doing our research for the grant program, we didn't have a lot of peer cities to review, so we looked beyond that to some other cities. Um, and it, it's a variety uh, of what cities do, um, but we hope, we think, but we do certainly hope that we have created one that really will work well with Waco. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so the, the neighborhood associations and the types of groups and formal groups that we have, we believe that this product hopefully yeah. will achieve uh, some satisfactory results. And I know you've also done some surveys, too. So you've done a lot of research. Uh, mm -hmm. This is not just a happen chance. And, and you made a great presentation to the council. And I know they, they uh, are thankful that you are in the position you are because you've done economic development and a lot of different things. Yeah. You have the credentials to be able to step in and lead something that's very vital and they are very committed to. And I think to put the money behind it like it is, this is, this is a great opportunity. Yeah. Well, I, thank you for mentioning the survey. We, we did absolutely survey our neighborhood associations because why on earth would we create a program for them that we don't ask them about? Mm -hmm. And we just asked them a very, some very simple questions. If we had a grant program, and you had a certain amount of money, what would you want to spend it on mm -hmm. to get a sense of what yeah. the projects might be? Absolutely. Um, but we absolutely seek their input all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Well, I know there's there's been talk also that the more, that's why you're calling it a neighborhood engagement 
Mm -hmm. I'm going to say that's good because it's a good definition because you're also saying that the neighborhood people that are, that are part of this group are going to be engaged in maybe in contributing to the budget process or some of the things that help in the organization of the city and be able to say, hey, $100,000 this year for allocations throughout the city for these grants programs, you know, how about more and things like that. So brings engagement with our city council representative, with city staff, the liaisons who will be able to convey the needs of the community mm -hmm. wider maybe than just the the neighborhood groups too. Talk a little bit about that as far as, because uh, we already talked a little bit about the uh, uh, volunteerism and mm -hmm. how to get on the boards and commissions and eventually city council and leaderships and things like that. But, you know, uh, what I, I, somewhere I've, I heard that they were possibly going to be able to help with ideas on the budget. Um, yeah, well, and I can't speak with a lot of authority on that because it it, yeah. it is, I believe, still in the idea stage. Mm -hmm. um, but I think um, I think our city council and city management is interested in really good ideas wherever they may come from. Mm -hmm. I think that's an easy case to make for the folks that we have yeah. leading our city. Mm -hmm. And certainly if some of those really good ideas come from neighborhoods, I think they would be happy to have them. One other thing that always tends to happen is <laughs> people don't um, generally understand how much things cost. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and we've had several people inquire about, could we use that grant to do sidewalks mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or something, some larger public improvement? And that, that little $7,500 is not going to get you very far. That would barely do the articular the drawing. It might much. do a corner ramp. <laughs> it, it's, it's just not going to, it's yeah. not going to get you somewhere. Uh, but there are some great things that it can do. Mm -hmm. And there are some great ideas that can come from various places for, for, uh, projects for the future. And we do routinely seek, um, input in all the, a variety of city departments from neighborhoods and other organizations about strategic plans and master plans. Mm -hmm. So, um, as you know, we're the local government, so we're the easiest to access, but we're also government, so we have to have plans before we can go march forward with ideas mm -hmm. and make sure people have had an opportunity to input. So they're a great resource for us to be able to reach folks in the community and get uh, information and opinions straight from everybody that's a resident. You mentioned the grant application deadline is May the 28th right now. Yes, sir. Is this an annual thing? So that is after that date, then it's going to have to wait till the next year, approximately, or is it because this is looking at the hundred thousand dollars overall? And and talk about that and then process of what people need to do pretty quickly here. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So um, this year is a little bit of an anomaly, um, but the grant programs will be based on the city's fiscal year, typically, so October through September. Mm -hmm. This one. This fiscal year, there was money sitting there, but we had to create the program first <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> from scratch. Um, so this, these grant applications that are due May 28th will actually be worked on during the summer and wrapped up at the end of the calendar year, we hope, okay. by December mm -hmm. uh, of, of 2021. But the routine going forward will be running on the city's fiscal year, so it will be applications being filled out and getting ready October through December we award grants in the early part of the next calendar year. Um, and then the projects get worked on like February or March through um, August or so. And so we will keep on that standard uh, of applications due at the yeah. end of the year and, and work on them. A lot of great reasons to become a part of a neighborhood association. Mm -hmm. So okay. my encouragement is, is to go out and look at the website, waco-texas.com slash neighborhood, mm -hmm. uh, and identify what neighborhood association you're in, or if there's not one, then get Follow the instructions on the website on how to form a neighbor association, and the city will help because mm -hmm. there are some legal things, and our legal department will assist in some of those kind of whatever it takes to make sure we're in line with the, with the community and that kind of thing. So mm -hmm. it's, uh, get it ready if, so you can then apply for the, for the grant program that's going on right now. And so great things. And I, I have to compliment the city council for, for mm -hmm. stepping forward yeah. in funding, major funding, for the neighborhoods to be able to do great things and, and projects as it is. Millette Harrison, has, uh, who is a neighborhood engagement director, 
Congratulations, by the way. Thank you. And that you also have Rolando yes. Rodriguez with you. <laughs> yeah. You're proud to have him, too, because it's, a, it's one not a one-man job, one-person job. Yeah. And yeah. so it's, it takes a team. The engagement is definitely an engagement job. Yeah. It's a great deal. I'm happy to be and here. And you all are uh, doing a great job. We're excited to say, we'll have you back on again and kind of get some reports on things like that. First mm -hmm. of all, thank you for everything you do, and thanks for being with us this morning. Thank you. Thank you mm -hmm. so much. And I'd like to thank you all of you all for watching and viewing this week's City Talk and hope you'll join us again next week for more information about the City of Waco on City Talk. This program is produced by the Municipal Information Department of the City of Waco and is provided as a public service by this station.